welcome once again to the Acid Trash Jamboree, a cosy corner of the internet where I talk about all manner of bizarre audio and visual delights. For this video, uh, along the same lines as the ones that I've been doing for uh, bits and pieces of music that I've been listening to lately, uh, here's a selection of films that I recently re-watched, uh, all from the 1970s in this case, uh, but all very different, uh, which I own on two separate DVD double bills, uh, released by the now uh, tragically uh, defunct Code Red label. First up we have Devil Times 5, aka People Toys, uh, in which a bus transporting uh, five dangerously unstable kids from uh, one mental institute to another uh, skids off an icy road and crashes, uh, killing all but one of the adults on board. Uh, mostly unharmed, the youngsters uh, make a break for it through some snowy woods in search of a place to stay. Uh, after a time, uh, they happen upon a ski cabin where a millionaire tycoon named Papa Doc is holidaying with uh, some family members and a bunch of his employees. Uh, the doctor who survived the crash is uh, hot on the heels of the pint-sized terrors, uh, but can he stop them before they cause untold amounts of havoc with Papa Doc and co? Of course not. Hmm, well, uh, this could have been uh, solidly good, uh, but unfortunately it's paced pretty poorly, actually, uh, with vast uh, swathes of the running time eaten up by boring and irrelevant chatter between the adults, uh, which is blatantly only there to pad out the runtime. With an extra uh, death or two uh, in between the blabbering, it uh, could have been way less of a chore to get through, but now, nah, unfortunately, we're uh, not afforded that luxury. Yeah, despite the nice uh, snowy location, uh, the film lacks much in the way of atmosphere or creepiness and the editing of the movie is very choppy too, especially at the start, uh, which soon got on my nerves. It does improve eventually though, uh, the murderous uh, carnage towards the end is uh, quite cool, uh, with some passable blood content, uh, plus there are some uh, brief flashes of uh, titillation in there to uh, keep your spirits up. So yeah, as flawed as it is, uh, it's not a total write-off. Next we have Mark of the Witch. Uh, this opens with a flashback to uh, Ye Olde Lancashire, uh, where a witch is uh, cursing her executor and his bloodline uh, before she's hanged. Uh, cut to modern day America, and a young student named Jill uh, buys a mysterious uh, spell book at a college's book sale and uh, takes it along to a party uh, that's being thrown by a hip, uh, occult-obsessed psychology professor that night. Uh, during the party, uh, the revelers perform a summoning ritual from the book, and before long, uh, you guessed it, uh, Jill ends up possessed by the spirit of the dead witch from the opening scene. Uh, the old crone has uh, some unfinished business with the professor, who just so happens to be a direct descendant of a certain hangman. This is another one that's just okay. Uh, it's very mild stuff on the whole, uh, with minimal uh, boobies and blood on offer, and save for a trippy sequence or two, uh, it's not particularly weird or out there, but still watchable enough as uh, far as 70s uh, drive-in horror crud goes. The score is quite good, uh, comprising a kind of corny uh, acid rock wig out, so, plus plenty of uh, synth twiddling and a fairly creepy uh, a cappella uh, witch's rune at the start. Yeah, actually, uh, Mark of the Witch uh, makes a bit of an effort to uh, appear like it knows its onions uh, regarding witchcraft and the occult, uh, so that's a nice touch. Uh, but like I said, uh, don't expect anything uh, too dark or horrific to go with it. Yeah, with its uh, nicey-nice uh, apple pie characters and kitschy interiors, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this was the main inspiration for uh, Annabella's uh, The Love Witch from a few years back. Though as uh, ironic and hipster-friendly as that film is, uh, you can't deny that it's an improvement on the source material. Okay, on to Pickup, uh, which is also known as Pazuzu. Uh, in this, uh, two young girls... Uh, the carefree, ditzy Carol and the uh, dark, brooding, spiritually inclined Maureen uh, hitch a ride across country uh, with a stoner fella called Chuck in a swanky uh, silver mobile home. Uh, Chuck's boss wants the vehicle in uh, Tallahassee by midnight, uh, though following a freak rainstorm, the trio find themselves uh, lost in the swamps, 
uh, which is where things start to get very strange and spooky indeed, uh, just like Maureen forewarned. Heavy. Yeah, you guessed it. It's uh, hippie art house surrealism time again. Yeah, I'd be a liar if I said I knew uh, what on earth this film is actually about. It's as if the director said, uh, yeah, you know, that acid trip sequence in uh, Easy Rider was cool. Uh, let's do something like that, but uh, let's make it the whole movie. You know, I uh, I guess the naked swimming thing was pretty groovy as well. Uh, we'll chuck a bit of that in there too. So yeah, flashbacks, premonitions, uh, hallucinations, fantasies, dreams, nightmares... Uh, the Twilight Zone Everglades in pickup. Uh, throw all of these things at our hapless trio with scarcely any let up. Uh, along the way, uh, we meet a predatory priest, a sleazy politician, uh, the creepiest clown, uh, this side of Jean Roland's The Iron Rose, and a cuddly raccoon as well. As I've said, uh, quite what it all means, I have absolutely no idea, but still, I do like it. It's got a great atmosphere. Great score. Uh, it's not massively eventful if it's a traditional horror film you're after. Uh, but if you want something uh, completely uh, off the beaten path, then uh, maybe give it a whirl. In The Teacher, uh, the titular character, Diane, uh, played by trash regular Angel Tompkins, uh, is the hottest woman in town and is uh, lusted after by many. Uh, though ever since a uh, no-good drifter husband left her, uh, she only has eyes for her neighbour and pupil, uh, Sean, uh, who happens to be ten years her junior. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Diane's number one fan is the local psycho stalker, Ralph, uh, who's played by the late Anthony James. Uh, he's recently taken to stalking Sean too, uh, ever since Ralph's little brother, Lou, uh, fell to his death. Uh, this is an accident that Ralph uh, thoroughly blames Sean for. Uh, before long, uh, Diane and Sean uh, start seeing one another. Uh, Ralph finds out about this, of course, uh, which is when he really starts to go off the rails. Hmm, this is uh, far from great. Uh, thin on the ground regarding action sequences and sporting some of the worst acting performances of all time. Uh, the teacher is mostly reliant on the saucy stuff to save the day. Or, more to the point, on uh, Angel Tompkins uh, getting the girls out occasionally. Uh, I guess the film does uh, perk up a little bit at the end, uh, but by that point you've already uh, waded through far too many unnecessary go-nowhere scenes and wasted opportunities for decent drama to even care anymore. As I said at the start, uh, I've already seen The Teacher once before, but I thought I'd check it out again because I, I like the vibe of the uh, abandoned warehouse that Ralph uses as his uh, hideout spot for spying on Diane. But yeah, I think I've uh, thoroughly scratched that itch now and need never see this again. So yeah, perhaps not the uh, most inspiring selection of films here by any means. Uh, but, as any uh, road-weary uh, trash movie traveller will attest, uh, this stuff can be hit and miss at the best of times. But yeah, I'd still recommend uh, Pick Up uh, if you want to see something truly weird and unclassifiable. Uh, anyway, I've got uh, tons more of these uh, types of films to review in future episodes. Uh, from good, to bad, to nigh on unwatchable. So yeah, if that sounds an enticing prospect, uh, please hit subscribe to be kept fully up to date. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again soon on the next edition of the Acid Trash Jamboree.